Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Kurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you. Indian Prime Minister Modi attends Shinzo Abe's funeral, meets Japanese counterpart in Tokyo. Activists accuse Pakistan floods are a man-made disaster, genocide unfolding in Sindh. And Bangladesh ferry disaster death toll climbs past 60. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday attended the state funeral of Japan's former PM Shinzo Abe, who was assassinated in July. Shinzo Abe was a polarizing figure who dominated modern-day politics as Japan's longest-serving leader. During his visit, PM Modi also held a bilateral meeting with his Japanese counterpart, Fumio Kishida, in Tokyo. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi met his Japanese counterpart Fumio Kishida and expressed his deepest condolences as he visited Tokyo to attend the state funeral of former Japanese PM Shinzo Abe on Tuesday. Both the leaders also discussed ways to further enhance bilateral relations to realize a free, open and inclusive Indo-Pacific, India's foreign ministry said in a statement. With flowers, prayers and a 19-gun salute, Japan honored Abe at the first state funeral for a former premier in 55 years. Shinzo Abe was making a campaign speech outside a train station when he was shot dead in July. A moment of silence was followed by a retrospective of Abe's political life and speeches by leading ruling party figures, including Kishida, Abe's successor, and then floral tributes were paid. The foreign dignitaries at the event included US Vice President Kamala Harris, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Australian PM Anthony Albanese. PM Modi on Twitter said Abe was a great leader, a phenomenal individual and someone who believed in India-Japan friendship. He shall live on in the hearts of millions. Earlier on July 9, a one-day national mourning was also observed in India in Abe's honour. During Shinzo Abe's tenure, the relationship between India and Japan grew and encompassed issues from civilian nuclear energy to maritime security, bullet trains to quality infrastructure, Act East policy to Indo-Pacific strategy. And India's Foreign Minister S. J. Shankar met U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin in Washington on Monday and discussed new opportunities for bilateral defense industrial cooperation, a move which Pentagon said would enhance New Delhi's contribution as a regional security provider. J. Shankar said the stability, security and prosperity of the Indo-Pacific should be secured as the global situation has become very challenging. India's Foreign Minister Dr. S. Jaishankar, who is on an 11-day official visit to the United States, met U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin on Monday and discussed new opportunities for bilateral defense industrial cooperation. During the delegation-level talks, Jaishankar said that the stability, security and prosperity of the Indo-Pacific should be secured as the global situation has become very challenging. He also emphasized that the stronger defense industrial collaboration and military exercises between India and U.S. are needed to achieve those targets. Pentagon in a readout said their cooperation would enhance New Delhi's contribution as a regional security provider. Jashankar in a tweet said, Defense and security cooperation is a key pillar of the contemporary India-U.S. partnership and both the leader noted the steady progress in policy exchange, interoperability, defense trade, service exercises and military industrial cooperation. Jashanka is also expected to meet his American counterpart Antony Blinken and other senior officials of the Biden administration in Washington. 
Senior leader of Pakistan's ruling PMLN party, Ishaq Dar, who is set to take the position of finance minister for the fourth time, has said he will get the country out of its economic rut. Dar, who is a declared absconder in several corruption cases, arrived in Pakistan from the UK after five years. An anti-graft court has suspended arrest warrants against him until 7th of October. Pakistan Prime Ministerial aide and senior PMLN leader Ishakdar said on Monday that he would take up the role of finance minister for the fourth time and will get Pakistan out of its economic rut. Current finance minister Mifta Ismail has verbally tendered resignation to PMLN Supremo Nawaz Sharif and said on Sunday he will formally step down making way for Dar to take over amid the persistent economic turbulence. Dar had quit as finance minister in 2017 after he flew to London for medical checkups amid pending corruption cases which he says were politically motivated. His arrest warrants have been suspended by anti-graft court until October 7, making his return to Pakistan possible. Mia Nawaz Sharif or Sadar or Prime Minister Mia Shwaj Sharif ne mujhe kaha hai ki mera apni pujire khazana ki zamedariyan kabool karu to alhamdulillah. मैं पूरी कोशिश करूंगा कि पाकिस्तान जिस भवर में मौसी तौर पर फंसा है हम इसको निकाले जैसे हमने 98, 99 में निकाला था 20, 13, 14 में निकाला था इंशाअल्लाह बड़ी उम्मीद है कि हम पॉजिटिव डायरेक्शन में जाएंगे। The IMF board last month approved a bailout program allowing for a release of over 1.1 billion US dollars to Pakistan. But the economic turmoil has been exacerbated by widespread floods estimated to have cost nearly 30 billion US dollars. Unpopular decisions Ismail took to adhere to IMF preconditions, including rolling back power and fuel subsidies, have also led to rise in inflation above 27 percent and the rupee tumbling to historic low. Moving on, Sindhi activists have accused that, that Pakistan's floods are a man-made disaster, as the government deliberately changed the flow of rivers to extract millions in aid amid the economic crisis. Staging a demonstration in London over negligence in Sindh, they highlighted a genocide is unfolding in the worst hit province as people are forced to live in hunger and suffer due to diseases with no aid reaching them. The World Sindhi Congress observed a one-day hunger strike in front of the Pakistan High Commission in London this past weekend to protest against the negligence of the Pakistan government amid the unprecedented floods that have led to the virtual drowning of the Sindh province. Activists said that it is clearly a man-made disaster and not a climate catastrophe, blaming Pakistan of deliberately changing the flow of rivers towards towns and villages in the region. And they said, in the aftermath, people are forced to live in hunger and suffer due to diseases, with no aid reaching them, despite Islamabad extracting millions in aid from various countries and donors. The protesters urged the international community to set up a high-level committee to investigate what they said ongoing genocide, especially in worst hit Sindh province. And they, they have left these 22 million people. 10 million have become homeless. They have just left them to be surrounded by water, to die in hunger, in diseases, in malnutrition. This is really unbelievable for the world. And what they are using this, they are using this as a reason to extract money from the international donors, the, 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 the various countries. And whatever aid has reached so far in Sindh, not, nothing has been distributed. The people are right there. So they are committing a clear-cut genocide. They already had the plans to commit genocide so that they can get hold of Sindh. But now they have got this reason. On Monday, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said the United States would provide an extra 10 million U.S. dollars in addition to 56 million dollars already given to Pakistan to help recover from the deadly flooding. The deadly disaster has killed nearly 1,600 people and caused damage estimated at 30 billion US dollars. Hundreds of thousands of people displaced by the floods are still living in the open after the deluge destroyed their homes and livelihoods. Authorities say the stagnant flood waters spread over hundreds of kilometers may take two to six months to recede. 
And Sri Lanka's apex court has decided not to proceed with a case filed against President Ranil Vikramasinghe related to the 2019 Easter Sunday attacks. Vikramasinghe, who was the Prime Minister at that time, was accused of not acting despite prior intelligence warning about the impending attacks. The top court said a case cannot be maintained against a sitting president. Sri Lanka's Supreme Court on Monday ruled to remove the current president Ranil Vikramasinghe from the case, who is named as a respondent in the fundamental rights petitions filed against the state for its failure to prevent the 2019 Easter Sunday bomb attacks. Nine suicide bombers belonging to local Islamist extremist group National Tawheed Jamaat, linked to militant group Islamic State, carried out the series of blasts that tore through three churches and three luxury hotels in Sri Lanka in April 2019. A presidential commission of inquiry had earlier said that the then-president Maithripala Sirisena and Vikrame Singhe, who was the prime minister at that time, had prior knowledge about the attacks but did not act. The apex court said according to the constitution, a case cannot be maintained against a sitting president and thus Vikrame Singhe is entitled to immunity. Further hearing of the petitions will be however held on 29th of September. This comes as last week the Colombo Fort Magistrates Court had named former President Maithripala Sirisena a suspect in the Easter bombings case for neglecting intelligence reports on the impending attack. Sirisena will have to appear in the court on October 14th. While well, moving on to news from Bangladesh, the death toll from the sinking of an overcrowded ferry carrying Hindu devotees in northern Bangladesh climbed to more than 60 on Tuesday, with many passengers still missing two days after the disaster. The death toll from the sinking of an overcrowded ferry carrying Hindu devotees in Bangladesh's northern Panchagar district climbed to at least 61 on Tuesday, with many passengers still missing two days after the disaster. Police said that while some of the passengers managed to swim ashore or were rescued, about 10 were still missing. Jahurul Islam, chief administrator of Panchagar, informed that the ferry had been taking Hindu devotees to a temple on the occasion of Mahalaya when Hindus make offerings to their ancestors. A five-member committee has been formed to investigate, but initial reports suggested the boat was carrying almost three times its capacity. The death toll is the worst for a maritime disaster in the country since 2015, when at least 78 people died after an overcrowded ferry collided with a cargo vessel near Dhaka. Dozens of people die each year in ferry accidents in Bangladesh, a low-lying country that has extensive inland waterways and lacks safety standards. And devotees in India's northern Amritsar city dressed their children in monkey attires to celebrate the beginning of a 10-day fair to honour monkey god Lord Hanuman on Monday. According to a belief, when childless people pray at the temple for an offspring, their wishes are fulfilled. When they get a child, they bring him to the fair, dress him up as a monkey soldier as a sign of gratitude to Hanuman. People bathed and dressed up their young children and some older boys in bright, shiny monkey attires at the famous Dogyana Temple in India's northern Amritsar city on Monday to mark the Langur Mela as a token of respect to the Hindu monkey god Hanuman for blessing them with a male child. The Langur Mela is celebrated in conjunction with the nine-day Hindu festival of Navratri to please Lord Hanuman and seek blessing for a healthy and long life for young boys. Kids were decked up by their parents in gold and silver designer clothes. They also carried a colorful staff and wore makeup to highlight their features. According to temple priest, parents have to bring their child two times a day and for 10 days. Hanuman 
तो कई वैसे ही बना देते हैं बच्चे को कई खुशी से लेकिन मैंने तो बच्चे को सुखना से बनाया भगवान जी ने मेरे को मेरे घर में लड्डू गोपाल जी दिए couples besides observing fast also sleep on the floor shun footwear and receive verses from the hindu epic ramayan some children also follow their parents by observing fast throughout the fair lord hanuman the deity which blesses devotee with children remained a bachelor committing his life to the service of lord rama india's patriarchal society traditionally prefers sons to daughters and the preference continues to be strong in the country's rural and semi urban areas Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com/sasianewsline and follow us on Twitter at sasianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India, breaking news and views from India.